Hello, Harold. Having a few teeth in troubles? If I was 30 years younger, you'd be having some teeth in troubles. You knew he wouldn't win. You give us back our money, you twister. We'll have the law on you. You shut your mouth, old man. Leave this to me, father. Look, thank you. Although my pater has somewhat crudely overstated our case, I do feel that in the essence what he says is most valid, namely that we've been ripped off. Uh, however, I am prepared, under these circumstances, to hand over the dog to you in return for our money back. We'll say no more about it. How does that sound? Very reasonable. I'll tell you what I'm prepared to do. Yeah? You keep the dog. Yeah? And I'll keep the money you already paid. Yeah. And if the balance, i.e. 160 sheets, is not forthcoming by Saturday week, me and my colleagues will be around beating on your drum with the Wilkinsons freshly stropped. <coughs> How does that sound? Very nasty. Saturday week. All right. Come, gentlemen. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, hello, Frankie. Hello, Harold. Long time no see. Not long enough for me, Frank. No, no, that's not very friendly, is it? You know the boys, don't you? What do you want? Oh, just a little friendly chat. I've got a little proposition to put to you. <laughs> not interested. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> do you want to try shutting it again? What do you want, Frankie? I'm busy. I told you, a little business proposition. I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> You've got to fix this too much, Frank. Oh, ask us in, Harold. There's a good boy. I don't conduct business on the doorstep. The boys might get a feeling they're persona non grata. They wouldn't know what it meant. No, but I can tell you. <laughs> and a very sensitive. Do yourself a favour, Harold. I'd hate to see any alteration in the configuration of your physiognomy. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Mr. Steptoe. How nice to see you again. Yeah. Oh, what a lovely home you have. When did you get out? This morning. You didn't mind me bringing the boys round, did you? I've been regaling them about all the lovely things you have here. They couldn't wait to see them. Isn't our lovely home, boys? Mm, lovely, yeah, lovely. Great connoisseurs, these boys. <laughs> yes. Very appreciative they are, too. Very knowledgeable. Always got their noses stuck in country life. What do you, uh, make of this, Robin? Here! It was a plate. <laughs> there are, you see, they know. Oh, yes, exquisite. Beethoven, isn't it? Eric, your favourite composer. <laughs> Butterfingers. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Frankie. Get to the point. What's it, what's it want? Ah, it's more like it. Mind if I sit down? Thank you. I represent the Shepherd's Bush Mutual Traders Insurance Company. Since when? Since this morning. Never heard of it. No, the company has not been in existence very long. How long? Since this morning. Of course. <laughs> we don't need no insurance. Everybody needs insurance. For instance, if you've been insured by us, those exquisite pieces now lying on the floor would have been covered. You mean... We could have uh, claimed on them. No, but they wouldn't have got broken, would they? <laughs> oh, Becky, you're not going to come down for Texas, are you? Protection, Harold? Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. What unfortunate terminology you do employ. No, no, no insurance, Harold. British insurance companies are held in high esteem throughout the world. Do you know that? Earthquake, pestilence, flood, losses at sea, broken crockery. I mean, it's one of our greatest invisibles, ain't it? Don't need any more insurance. We're fully covered. Yes, but they're going to get fed up, keep paying out for breakages, aren't they? I mean, the time is going to come when they're going to say, no more. Sorry, Mr Steptoe, you're a bad risk. You'll have to go elsewhere to someone like... You? Like me. Of course. That's right. So why not save yourself and them a lot of trouble by coming to me and insuring yourself right from the outset? How much? Well, I think we could take you on at full risk for a mere 15 quid a week. A mere 15 quid? That's all we pay a year at the moment. Can't afford to pay 15 quid a week. Don't say that. 
I've been thinking of the cover you're going to get. I mean, up to now, we've only been talking about accidents. What about malicious damage? Awful lot of vandalism about. It's right. Have you seen the official figures? Shocking. I mean, you take that beautiful Chinese urn. Supposing someone was going to come in here and smash it. <laughs> And there again, we also ensure you against personal accidents. No, no, oh, God! Oh! <laughs> I mean, you can't put a little girl out there complaining with two broken arms, can you? <laughs> and supposing the stable was to catch fire? Oh. Hey, my advice get the strength of the insurance companies round you. <laughs> <laughs> Just sign there, would you? Mr. Stepdown. Fifteen quid, please. Plus a VAT. <laughs> Eight per cent. Will you sell for a quid? Sure. There you are, you even get your own personal little book. And just to make things easy for you, a man will come round each week, just like the brew, and collect your premium. You have made a wise decision, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. Come, Eric, Robin. We have other calls to make before we can call it a day. An insurance man's life is not an easy one. It's a bloody profitable one now, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, and by the way, in case you're thinking of complaining to the authorities, the Shepherd's Bush Mutual's fee days are completely boner, having been lodged with the Board of Trade. And such complaint might well result in a loss of your no-claims bonus, together with your horse. <laughs> Good afternoon. Too late. They're here. Harold, come out to fly. <laughs> Hello, Frankie! Uh, that was a big mistake. Yeah, it has certainly been a mistake, Harold. A very silly one. Yeah, well, well, well you see, it was m my father. I thought I'll oh, pay double. Yeah, I'd like to oblige you, Harold. I really would. Unfortunately, your silly old father put it around the bush that he told me to get stuffed, you see. So I'm afraid he's left me no room for manoeuvre. Would it be a restitution if he was to apologise? Well, I am normally in favour of a flexible response. Oh, God. <laughs> but I'm afraid this is going to have to be the big one. Oh, God. To sort of pour en courage les autres. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we had an entente, eh? Start a stable, lads. Maximum damage. What would you let him have with you? It's all right, Darren. We've been taking lessons. In what? You'll see. Need a need! a need! Come on, Snow White, let's get